Imagine using technology to restore eyesight to the blind. Elon Musk's Neuralink brain implant company believes that they can do it, and to a lot of people that might sound like biblical grandstanding, but there is good scientific evidence that says digital sight may be a very real possibility. And this is how Neuralink brain implants will cure blindness. The first trick is understanding what vision even is. There are certain aspects of human eyesight that are well understood, but overall, we really don't know how this works. Light as we commonly know it is essentially just electromagnetic radiation that exists within our visible wavelengths. That radiation is contained inside energetic particles called photons. These photons have no mass, no electrical charge, and they are in a constant state of motion, hence the speed of light. Photons of light enter your eyeball and are focused by a lens onto a layer of tissue near the back of the eye. That is your retina. It's made of special cells called photoreceptors, and they can transform electromagnetic energy into electrical signal. That signal flows through the optic nerve and into the visual cortex of the brain, at which point billions of neurons inside the brain translate the electrical signal into everything that you can see. We know that the neural network processes visual information in layers. There are basic, low-level processing layers for things like edge detection, identifying curves, recognizing objects. But when we get to higher levels of processing, like color encoding, no one really knows what's going on in there. When a person loses their ability to see, it's almost always a problem associated with the eye or the optic nerve, not the visual cortex. So the majority of our treatments right now are focused on regenerating that physical tissue. In most scenarios, that doesn't work. But this also means that it's just the input device that isn't working. The processing system is still intact, so in theory, we can plug electrical signals straight into the visual cortex and create vision in the same way as the eye and the optic nerve. This does sound crazy, but it has been done before. Actually, the first experiments with stimulating vision through electrical signals date back all the way to the late 1920s. In order to understand this, we need to learn a new word first, photosphere. This is a phenomenon where you see light in your visual field without any light entering your eye. Do you ever see stars with your eyes closed? Do you see patterns of light when you rub your eyes? These are photosphenes that you are seeing. Photosphenes can be induced by mechanical, electrical, or magnetic stimulation of either the retina or the visual cortex. So, you'll see them if you take a blow to the head, but you'll also see them if you get an electrical shock in the right portion of your brain. This was first confirmed by the famous neurologist Otfrid Forrester in 1929. Decades later, in 1968, two scientists at the University of Cambridge refined the procedure by connecting electrodes into the brain of a 52-year-old blind patient and wiring them to an array of radio devices. When certain radio signals were transmitted into the brain, the patient experienced sensations of light. When just one electrode was stimulated, the patient would see a single, very small spot of white light in a consistent location. This is the photosphere, and it was found that as long as the electrodes were spaced more than 2 millimeters apart, the resulting photosphenes can be easily distinguished from each other. So by stimulating multiple electrodes at once, the patient would be caused to see patterns of light. This experiment was repeated in 1974 at the University of Utah. They placed a rectangular grid of electrodes into the visual cortex, four across by three deep, and then they used these electrodes to project patterns of braille dots into the patient's vision, creating a very primitive yet effective visual prosthetic the first of its kind. Now, of course, opening up a person's skull and sticking wires into their brain just to show them braille letters isn't really helping anyone, but it is a solid foundation to build on. We know that Neuralink is working on an application called Blindsight, the company's follow-up to their current app, Telepathy. Telepathy is all about output. Neuralink electrodes detect activity spikes from within the brain and convert those to digital signals that are transmitted wirelessly into a computer so all that the user has to do is think about moving a cursor on a screen, and telepathy will make it happen. Now, Blindsight becomes about input. 
Neuralink has to use the electrodes to inject electrical signals into the brain to stimulate the neurons and produce the photosphene effect. This would start with a digital camera, like a GoPro strapped to a person's head or something like those Ray-Ban smart glasses. These devices are already purpose-built for converting photons into electrical signal, just like the retina. Then the Neuralink device can take the place of the optic nerve, transmitting the electrical signals directly into the neural networks of the visual cortex and stimulating the photosphene to create a visual representation of what the camera is seeing. The idea is that the smaller the electrode, the smaller the photosphene that the patient will see, so instead of seeing a big dot in their vision, the Neuralink user might see something more like a pixel on a display. Using Neuralink's R1 robot, these electrodes can be placed into a highly accurate grid on the visual cortex, just like the old experiment from the 70s, but with orders of magnitude higher resolution. Now that's not going to instantly create any kind of photorealistic image. What the Neuralink user will most likely see is something like an old Atari video game. It won't be particularly useful for seeing details, but it might be good enough for a person to see edges and large objects so that they don't bump into stuff. More resolution in the Neuralink image would require more electrodes. Neuralink is currently maxed out at around 1,000, but they are hoping to reach 3,000 or even 6,000 in the near term, and as many as 16,000 electrode channels within the next year or two. But it's the amount of bandwidth going through the device that is the big limiting factor right now. We all know what happens to a computer when it starts working too hard. It gets hot, and you don't want a computer implanted in your skull to start getting hot. So the efficiency of the computer chip and the performances of the battery play important roles as well. Also, to give a person full panoramic vision, they would need to have two Neuralink implants, one on each hemisphere of the brain. Vision from your right eye is processed in the left side of the brain and vice versa. To make things even stranger, the image projected onto your retina by the lens in your eyeball is actually cast upside down. Your brain doesn't flip the image because it doesn't receive a projected image, just a series of nerve impulses that it decodes in such a way that everything is perceived correctly. Actually, the whole process of seeing things the right way up is pretty strange. If you tilt your head over 90 degrees, your perception of the world doesn't tilt, you still know up and down, even when you're sideways. This is the kind of stuff that still needs to get figured out, and that's going to take a lot of trial and error before we even begin to get things right. It won't be an easy process, don't be expecting a Neuralink to replace virtual reality or augmented reality headsets anytime soon but there is potential for computer-enhanced vision to go far beyond the human eye at some point in the future, and this would be long in the future, but in theory, we can go way beyond just projecting a movie into your head. What we know as light is simply electromagnetic radiation that exists within our visual spectrum of wavelengths, but there is light that exists in higher wavelengths than what we can see. That's ultraviolet light, and there is light that exists in much longer wavelengths as well, that's infrared. We can't see this radiation, but we know it exists, and we can easily create digital image sensors that can read this light for us and convert it into a visible spectrum. Now, if we go back to that idea of strapping a GoPro to a person's head and replace that with an infrared camera or an ultraviolet light detector, now we've just unlocked a whole new way for a person to perceive the world. We can go way beyond our conscious experience, deeper into the nature of the universe and existence, like taking a high-powered psychedelic drug without any of the weird side effects. Anyway, coming back around to real life, can Neuralink restore sight to the blind? Yes, but not in the sense of flicking a switch and turning your eyes back on, but more in the sense of being able to restore a very rudimentary visual perception of the outside world, like living inside your own low-res monochrome video game. But as the device capability improves over time, a long time, resolution will improve as well. As for those higher level functions, would you ever see colors? Could you look around in every direction you want? Can you tilt your head and still know which way is up? Well, these are secrets that still need to be revealed.